Hello, welcome to the fourth week of the course on audio signal processing for music applications. And in this uh, demonstration class, I want to continue what uh, we started in the last one, which was to analyze a sound, in that case, a sound of a soprano, using the short time free transform, the topic of this week. So in this, uh, in this uh, lecture, I want to uh, analyze another sound, a sound that can give us another view of the short time Fourier transform. So let's open uh, the sonic uh, visualizer and this is the sound we're gonna analyze uh, today and uh, this is the sound of a piano and so let's uh, let's listen that okay so this is a, a very simple piano phrase uh, quite clear uh, five notes so let's go directly to the SMS tools and let's go to the short time for your transform uh, module. So let's uh, go to the piano sound um, that is here, piano.wav. Okay, and now let's decide about the parameters. Okay, in the last class we mentioned that the Blackman uh, was a quite uh, good choice uh, for uh, what we were doing, so let's keep it. The window size, okay, this is uh, not as a high uh, pitch as the, as the voice, so we will need uh, quite a, a bigger uh, window size. So, I don't know, let's start with, for example, let's say 1,501. This is a, a not size window, and uh, this is something that uh, we will, uh, whenever possible, we will do. Uh, if we take uh, uh, windows with an odd size, that means that they can be centered around zero, and especially for the phase analysis, that's going to be very convenient. So let's um, uh, use uh, that, and let's uh, uh, take that as a, as a habit of using always odd size windows. The FFT has to be bigger than that, and of course, normally, uh, now we will be always using power of two, so that is efficient, you can use the FFT algorithm. So the power of two bigger than uh, 1500 is uh, 2048. Okay, that's a good uh, size. And the hop size uh, has to be, for the Blackman window, has to be a, a hop so that the windows overlap correctly. So let's say they have to be at least one-fourth of uh, 1,500. So that would be around, let's say, 325. Um, okay, that, uh, that would be around one-fourth. And let's compute. Okay, uh, this was the input sound, the magnitude and phase spectrogram and the output uh, reconstructed. So let's first just listen to the reconstruction. Okay, that's pretty good. So I guess we haven't lost any information from the analysis. So that means that the hop size and the window size were chosen correctly so that they, they overlap uh, correctly. And um, well, in the phase spectrum we see uh, it looks like very minimalist, but uh, it's quite interesting. Uh, we see these uh, very clear uh, vertical lines and uh, these uh, correspond to the attacks. Basically, this means that during these attacks, the phase is quite disrupted, is quite changed. There is a quite uh, big transition there. And that's uh, something that we see very clearly in the phase information. And in the more steady, during the uh, nodes, we see more these horizontal structure. That means that uh, the harmonics maintain a kind of a phase continuity that can be identified in uh, the phase spectrogram. In the magnitude spectrogram, we see, uh, well, we see very clearly the, the harmonics, these are red lines, and we see that as, as the sound evolves, uh, piano being a percussive instrument, in the attack, uh, there is more energy and so there is more harmonics and as the time evolves the harmonics are decaying and especially they decay the high harmonics and the low harmonics are staying more. We also see quite clearly the attacks of the sounds uh, and what is going on during the attack so that's, uh, that's quite interesting. Okay, now let's zoom in 
and let's uh, uh, go into some detail of that. So let's use the uh, option of this uh, figure of doing zooming into a rectangle. And let's just take uh, this middle node, the fourth node, uh, from a little bit before the attack to around uh, when the node ends. Okay. And that's, uh, that's uh, what we're getting. And what we're seeing, in fact, is uh, the discretization of the analysis. We have mm -hmm. zoom enough so that we can see this vertical uh, kind of uh, quantization, these vertical bars. These correspond to every frame, every spectrum computed. So at every bar correspond to the number of samples of the hop size. So this uh, was this, uh, this 325 samples that we are hopping from one frame to the next. And vertically, we also see this uh, kind of discretization, these horizontal lines that are, are, are more uh, narrower because we have taken quite a bit of samples in the FFT. We have taken 2,048 uh, samples, so that's, we have a pretty good frequency uh, resolution. Let's uh, compute with a, a different set of parameters. For example, let's use a window size, uh, which is smaller. For example, let's use uh, 201 uh, samples. And let's use an FFT size correspondingly smaller. It doesn't have to be that big. So let's say 256. And of course, the hop size has to be uh, accordingly to the window size, at least one fourth. So let's use 50. And now let's uh, compute it. Okay, it takes a little bit because it's, uh, it's of course, being the hop size smaller, it has to compute more FFTs. And this is the, uh, uh, what we get. Um, basically, we, we are visualizing a similar thing, the analysis and then the resynthesis. And the synthesis is going to be pretty good. Let's listen to that. Since we have maintained the same relationship between the hop size and the window size, the identity is preserved. So the output sound is uh, identical to the original. But now let's zoom into the same region that we zoomed before to try to understand uh, the differences. Let's get a little bit before the attack and let's get a little bit of the steady state. Okay, and let's compare it with the previous one. Okay, this was the previous and this is uh, this one. Well, quite different. Um, if we uh, mention what we were talking about before, the concept of the vertical and horizontal lines, in terms of the vertical lines, we see them narrower. There are more frames per second here. So the resolution, the time resolution is bigger. Okay, so we see more things in terms of what, how things evolve in time. In exchange, at the vertical axis, the frequency resolution is uh, worse because the FFT size was uh, much smaller. Therefore, these uh, boxes are kind of uh, larger in the, in the vertical axis. So we see less information at the f in the frequency resolution domain. And this is at the core of one of the things that are fundamental for the short time Fourier transform is what we call the time frequency compromise. In the first case, we had uh, a good frequency resolution and a not so good time resolution. In exchange, in the, this second example, we have a pretty good time resolution, but not so good frequency resolution. And that's a quite important consideration to take into account when we analyze the sound and to decide what is the best set of parameters for a particular sound. Okay, now let's uh, go into uh, one aspect to the attack and try to understand some aspect of the sound by looking at this uh, a find uh, spectrum analysis that we have started to do. So let's, for that, let's do the DFT, okay, and we will just compute the uh, DFT of one location at the attack.
Okay, at the attack, more or less, uh, it was around, uh, let's see, it was uh, 1.54, uh, that's kind of the, where the attack is. And let's keep this uh, same uh, resolution that uh, we, ha we have. So let's keep the 1,501. Uh, 1, and let's uh, have the FFT size 2048. And uh, let's uh, use the piano sound. Okay, now we will compute it. Okay, this is the, the beginning, and we see here that is the attack of the piano. So we see uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, things going on here. Uh, the phase and the reconstruction. Let's zoom into uh, the beginning. So let's just get the uh, uh, magnitude spectrogram up to, let's say, well, let's get up to 10,000 Hertz. Okay. So we see quite a bit of things. Let's now uh, recompute this with the same parameters, but a little bit beyond the attack, so when more is a steady state, so let's say um, let's say um, 100 milliseconds uh, uh, after, so 1 second and 64 with the same parameters. Okay, and this is uh, another uh, analysis. And let's uh, again zoom into the same region. Let's just zoom into the region that goes until 10,000 Hertz and uh, that we get all the information. Okay, and let's compare it and let's see if we can uh, understand uh, what is uh, going on, what is going on at the sound level. Okay? This was, uh, the top is the tack, the bottom is the uh, more steady state. Um, in the time domain clearly we see the difference. In the frequency domain, uh, I believe we can see uh, also significantly uh, difference. For example, in the in the attack, the harmonics are not so well defined because it's the beginning of the sound. The harmonics have not been uh, started uh, completely. Instead, in the steady state, uh, these peaks are much more clear, much more resolved. Okay. Then another thing is that in the attack the kind of the noise floor or basically the energy of the high frequencies is higher. So the high frequencies are much louder than or at least substantially louder than during the steady state in which are the lower harmonics that are clearly louder. Okay, so this is a good way to try to understand a particular sound, a particular fragment of a sound and, and do uh, some analysis uh, using the short time Fourier transform that gives us some insight into the sound. Okay, um, so that's uh, basically all I wanted to say. Um, so we have been uh, looking at, uh, at, uh, at the sound, in this case the piano sound, using the, the SMS tools. And of course this sound is available under free sound. And uh, hopefully this uh, has given you another uh, insight into uh, the, the tool we are building, in this case the short time free transform, but at the same time has given you some insight into the piano uh, sounds. And I believe it's a quite an interesting uh, uh, instrument and, and sound. And using these tools we can appreciate quite a bit uh, of it. So anyway, so that's it uh, for the demonstrations of uh, this week. So I hope to see you next class. Thank you.